Welcome to SF Bay Insider, my exit, Moffett Field and NASA. I've arrived early with press and media at Ames Research Center to view the transit of Venus. First, I'm going inside, because I want to see the moon rock from the Apollo 15 mission. Wow, amazing. And here's the first unmanned Mercury spacecraft. But I didn't come here to sit inside and watch a webcast. I'm here because many amateur astronomers, like Dan Wright from the San Jose Astronomical Association, are outside setting up their scopes. Hello, Hello there. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Fine, thank you. So what do you have here? What kind of a scope is this? A 10-inch old 18-year-old <laughs> telescope. Uh -huh. And we the, we, the public, are going to be able to uh, yes, exactly. view here. Yes, here. So you're going to project this on a screen? Yeah. Oh, very interesting. That's Dan. What is that? Is that it's a lens hair. cleaner? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, here, it makes a breeze, you know, when you're hot. You can oh, yeah. blow on yourself. Uh -huh. Not in Phoenix. Uh, that's, that's can you tell us a little bit about this telescope for those of us who don't know anything about them? Yeah, sure. Usually a telescope is a long tube with a lens in the front and its job is to take a whole bundle of light rays that are all together or parallel like a bundle of spaghetti or something and bring them all down to a focal point. So that's what a telescope does. Well this thing has a lens in the front like that, then it has a mirror in the bottom and the light comes in and, and goes through the scope and bounces off the mirror and the mirror is cup shaped like this. So every, all the light that hits it winds up uh, being reflected in a converging cone. And the cone doesn't reach the focus, it hit, bounces off another mirror, which is in the front. Mm -hmm. And that sends the cone uh, converging and shooting out the back here. The converging cone of light reaches a focal point about right here. And that coincides with the focal point of the eyepiece. So this light, light does a sort of a triple bounce. It comes in the front, bounces off a mirror, goes forward, bounces off another mirror, and finally shoots out the back. Their effect is as though the optical tube were many more than three times longer, right? The secondary mirror actually makes it so the focal length is more than three times. So it's a compact form of a telescope. I spent all day Saturday building this box. Walk along. <laughs> I have this, I glued wooden thing on the bottom and put a threaded insert so I can be screwed, screwed onto a tripod head and everything. This is like white foam board from Office Depot. Okay, first contact has been made, but it's very hard to see. Did you see it, Mia? Okay, Mason, look at here. See that little dent on the side right there? See that little dent? Okay, Dan, one of our little astronomers wants to know why is the sun the color white? Because it's a mixture of all the colors at once. It's a mixture of blue and green and red and yellow, all, all mixed together to make white. Can you see it with those glasses? Let me try. Can I try your glasses? I'm going to look at the sun. I don't see a black dot yet. You can just barely see it. Can you see it? It's not, up, it's not far enough. I think when it goes farther onto the sun, then you'll be able to see it with glasses. But it's just too close to the edge right now. First contact is when it starts to go across the sun. Okay. Second contact is when it finally is, when the, when the, the edge of it has made it onto the sun all the way. Okay. And then there's third contact when the when it reaches the other edge, and the fourth contact when it finally goes all the way off. See the look of it. Second contact coming up, isn't it? So, do you think this is second contact? <laughs> nope. Not quite yet. No, I still see uh, second contact. I'll, I'll say it's done when light appears. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. At that point, we'll have a catastrophic earthquake and the, the world will end. Right? <laughs> or maybe Venus will just kind of just poof, like burn up and explode, right? Uh, Ooh, it's almost done! <laughs> it's really close now. You think there is? Is that it? That second contact? I think we got it. Yeah, there's a is there a teardrop effect going on? Yeah, there's one little bit of light there. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there is one. Yeah, we see the It's a little bit of yellow. I think it's quite high. What do you say? Is that second contact? Yep. Yes. I'd say like just a 
Yeah. Just about that there's still that light shining through on the other side. Yeah. It is not I all the way like the little last part. Like yeah. I see light. There we go. There is light. Take a peek. Oh yeah, that's there's light. Okay, that was it. That was it. Second contact. What time of day did second contact have? Yeah. Yeah. And the time. I know they predicted it right, but it's 3:24. Do you see him? No, really? Let me see it again. Yeah, I'll tell you. Later. We paid quite a, we paid quite a lot of kids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Look straight in. You see the red ball? Okay. You see Venus sitting over there on the right? That's Venus sitting over there on the right. Yeah. Folks have stayed home from work and taken their kids out of school and daycare to be here today. The Venus happens in 2117. Bye for now, NASA. I'm on my way back to San Francisco. Before a catastrophic event befalls us, Venus goes poof, burns up, and explodes. How large is the universe? Someday, a scientific mind and a team of dedicated observers will answer that question, too.